Welcome to Biblio Bistro. My name is Megan Jazak, and I'm a registered dietitian and community health educator with the Portage Health Foundation. And today I have with me Michael Sinaitis, who is the program coordinator and chef extraordinaire with the Portage Lake District Library. For those of you that are new to Biblio Bistro, this is a cooking series in partnership with the foundation and the library that features simple recipes with seasonal and local produce that are budget friendly. So Michael, what are we cooking today? We are cooking an asparagus and bok choy frittata. Ooh, yum. I know. So things that you can find at the farmer's market for this recipe includes eggs, green onions, or they're also called scallions, bok choy, asparagus, which may or may not be easy to find, and garlic. And the things you'll need from the grocery store are gonna be olive oil, ginger root, which is optional, and sesame oil, which is also optional. So Megan, oh, why did you pick this recipe? <laughs> That's a great question, Michael. You know, I would say the biggest reason that I picked this is that it's a quick, easy meal. Sure. It could be used at breakfast. You know, I think eggs are commonly thought of as a breakfast dish, but it's unique enough with the ginger, the green onions, and some of the veggies. You could easily have this as a quick weeknight dinner. Mm. And it's nutritious. Okay. It's packed all, with all sorts of goodies, which we'll get into in a little bit. Cool. Now I have a question for you, Michael, mm. maybe even a couple. Okay. So we've got asparagus and we have bok choy. When would you usually find those locally available, whether it's a farmer's market or even just a farm stand? Yeah, I think that the asparagus would be first here. Okay. And you know, my experience is up here after the snow has gone and everything, it's usually kind of like mid-May, mid, okay. to, mid to later in May. And then the bok choy would be more in the summertime. I would think June, June, July, that would be ready. Like when, when those um, Napa cabbages and things are ready. Same thing for the green onions. Okay. They, yep. The nice thing about the green onions is they're ready long before a regular onion is. That's why I use them a lot. Okay. For sure. Yep. Perfect. So it's kind of like this would be a good if you're trying to eat seasonally and locally, like a late spring, early summer, depending. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Well, should we get started? Let's do it. Okay. What do you want first? I have got my skillet Let's all ready. See. Well, we could start with sauteing some of the the garlic and the ginger, and I think green onions. Okay, so sounds I'll good, I'll get that going. We should talk about the pan, maybe a little bit. Yeah. So we're gonna use a cast iron skillet because we're gonna pop this in the oven after we get it going. You can also use a nonstick skillet, which I would do probably at home, but you do need to make sure that it's got a metal handle, that there's nothing that you're throwing in the oven that's gonna melt on you. Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> But I do know that. Um, so we're gonna use cast iron. The one thing about using a cast iron is we could talk a little bit about seasoning the cast iron at some point, but um, it does need to have a good seasoning and use a little more oil than you think you would need to because if you don't have a well-seasoned cast iron and or enough oil in it, your frittata is gonna stick. Okay. And you'll go to all that trouble and it won't be as pretty when you're like, scraping it out. So when you say season, are you just talking about like having an oil coating or what yep. does that mean? So I don't typically uh, wash my cast iron with soap and water. I rinse it, maybe take a scrubby with no soap to it with just water okay. and then dry it well. And then I'll give it a little coating of oil and a okay. paper towel and put it away that way. Now, if I were cooking something, um, frying pork chops, which I love to do in a cast iron skillet, then you have to do a bit more cleaning, but then I'll do the same thing. Um, this cast iron I've had my whole adult life, so it's it's well seasoned, but um, if you're gonna use soap and water on it, you're gonna need to pay a little more attention to it. But okay. try to avoid it if you can. Yeah. Yep. Thanks, no, that's really And helpful. cast iron doesn't like acid. Okay. So uh, no bueno on the tomato products. Okay, no lemon juice or things like no, that. No, okay. cook no, your, cook your pasta sauce in a stainless pan. Okay. Don't do it in your skillet, okay. in your cast iron. Well, that's good to know. Yeah, here we go. How much oil? Let's see. They simply say, Some. keep the olive oil. Let's see. Um, <laughs> I'm going for it. Two tablespoons. Perfect. That's, that's where we're at. And like I said, I'm going to give it a little more because um, I don't want our frittata to stick. And I'm going to get it all up on the sides and everything too, like that. Perfect. Okay, garlic and ginger. Yes, yeah, so we need one clove of garlic minced. Okay. And then we need, where's the, oh yeah, one teaspoon of freshly grated ginger. Okay. Oh, and you brought that fancy little. A little microplane. Yeah. Yes, that's good. I love this. 
Yeah, I use that for so many different things. Do you want me to zest this or, or grate it for you? Shh, go for it. Okay. You can go. I mean, do you want to go right in the pan? Yeah. You can. Yeah, why not? Why not is right. So the garlic is optional, um, but we think that it's going to add a nice little extra flavor to it, especially bok choy is kind of like an Asian green. Would you mm -hmm. say that's a correct classification? Yeah. yeah. So it kind of adds a little bit of an Asian twist. It'll go well together for sure. Here you go. I'm going to I'm going to save you cuz that's the one thing about the plane. Yes. You got to you got to get all the good stuff out of there. Whoa. Hey, I smell the garlic already. Mm -hmm. So I did get the pan hot enough. That's the other thing about the um I'm going to need to get cracking here, Megan. That's the other thing about the cast iron. It does take longer to heat up. But it holds its heat longer. So I'm actually going to take that off the burner so I don't burn the garlic. So we're ready. Okay, and then it says to add the green onions, so we want those sliced, including the green tops. Okay, how many of those do you want? We want three. Okie dokie. So you did such a nice job of cleaning these up for me. I'm just going to take the ends off. Okay. And just a little one that got away there. You know, I like that um, you said that this would make a great dinner, a quick dinner, because I do that all the time. And the other thing, I love this recipe that we're trying something different in it. You can make a frittata with anything you have in the kitchen, refrigerator, mm. like, you know? Oh yeah. It's, it's great to have a recipe and try something different like what we're doing with it. Right. Um, Cause I've actually never thrown bok choy in a frittata before. But um, it's great for cleaning out the fridge. Right. You don't have Absolutely. to go to the grocery store. You can just be like, what do I have in there? As long as you have eggs and some vegetables, you're good to go. Yeah, and they're kind of like a, I'd call it like a low key cousin to like a, a quiche or something. So, yep. you know, a quiche, I mean, let's be real, crust is different. You know, this is a crust list. You're not going to get the, the same um, exact type of recipe, but it's a lot quicker to do this. Right. So. Okay, should we talk bok choy? It's probably time, hey? Yes, let's grab some bok choy. So we have a couple different, this is the standard bok choy. Um, the recipe calls for one small head, I believe. And that's a big head. Yes. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just, since you already cleaned this up for us, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna do this. I'm just gonna take about half of it off. Perfect. And I'll start talk, uh, chopping this up while you're talking about our other little friend in there. Sure, so we also have um, a little bok choy. This is called a baby bok choy. So if you can't find this at the market um, or the grocery store, oftentimes the baby bok choy is more available than the big head. So, and this would work just as easily. Um, and in some cases, it's actually a little bit easier to chop. Sure, So I could see that. Either one would work just fine. I could um, see that. You could use really whatever green you want as well. If you're not familiar with bok choy and want to stick with something more familiar, um, this is just a fun way to try it, um, I think, in a pretty uh, safe environment. <laughs> let's, let's put it that way. Yeah, and so with the bok choy, it's kind of like cooking with other um, vegetables that have different textures on the same plant, like char, kale, and stuff like that. We're gonna get the stems in there first. I think that looks probably pretty good, don't you, mm -hmm. for the amount? Yeah. Um, and then I'll do the leaves, I'll, I'll chop those leaves up and get a little more of that in there. Okay. That'll be like spinach. So we're gonna cook this down a little bit before we get to the next part. Okay. Um, just to sort of, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah. And you know, a fun fact about cast irons in terms of nutrition is that they actually, the food will absorb some of the iron from the cast iron. So if you're having difficulty with your iron levels, um, cooking in a cast iron is actually a way to boost up your iron naturally without having to take any supplements. Oh, I like it. Mm -hmm. And is that like for the life of the pan, forever and ever? That's my understanding. Nice. Yeah. Whoa, Pretty cool. That. Okay, that looks like a good amount to me. I'm gonna stop there. It's, sure. So the other thing is probably with this, like anything else, it's probably tempting to overstuff it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and you know, sometimes less is more. Like you want to have a good variety of stuff in there, but we don't have to like fill it to the top of the pan. Right. 
Oh. That sounds like a chef with some wisdom. Yeah, yeah I always overstuff things. I overstuff pies, I overstuff pizzas. I think it's, I get so excited about eating it. Yeah. And I think more, 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 more. Oh, I'm glad it's not just me. No. I do that all the time. Yeah. Okay, here we are. Okay. So now we're gonna add the asparagus here. All righty. Oh, uh, and you did a beautiful job with those. Go. Do you wanna tell people how you prep those? I sure can. So I actually was taught that you can just snap the asparagus and that will kind of take away that woody part that's at the bottom. Mm -hmm. We've been keeping those and you just, it's an easy way to quick. Yeah, I don't like have it. To chop, don't have to get a cutting board. I like it. So I'm gonna use about half of these. Does that seem about right to you? Yeah, yep. Um, that was a really nice big bunch. Now I'm gonna cut them just to like, so everything cooks roughly about the same time. I'm just gonna go down, um, like starting up here at the spear, okay. the stem. I'm just gonna give it a little cut in half like that. I do that with carrots too. It's an easy way to cut down on the cooking time. Okay. And just give it a little something like that. I've never done that before. Yeah, and that reminds me, you did such a nice job of cleaning those asparagus. Now I personally would keep my asparagus ends. Um, I, it doesn't always happen for me, but whenever I'm cooking, I love asparagus, and whenever I'm doing something with them, like I'll, it's not unusual during the season for us to have asparagus like three, maybe four times a night. Yeah, a week. Um, a night. A night would be <laughs> a night would be a lot. <laughs> oh, <wait>. true asparagus <laughs> lover. <laughs> lover. Um, so I'll save up my stems, the ones that you uh, pinched off for us, mm -hmm. the lower part, and I'll make soup. Okay. And I'll throw it in a pot with some veggie broth and some onion and some garlic, whatever, whatever I've got. Yeah. And I'll cook it, and then I'll just take like the immersion blender mm -hmm. and blend it up. And you don't even notice that, like. These are pretty small. They're not even that tough. I mean, if you can still break through them like that, you can still use them. Yeah. So for this, this is great that we did it the way we're doing it, and I do it exactly that same way. But I do keep the ends because, you know, you could have a nice little asparagus soup for lunch. I mean... Yeah, and that's a perfect way. You know, I think we've talked in other episodes about trying to reduce food waste. That's a really great example of a way where... We're using as much of the vegetable as we possibly can. Oh, yeah. I love that. And I haven't tried that, so I will have to do that next time. I love asparagus. Soup. Me too. Okay, everybody's in there, cooking away. Okay, I think that brings us to our eggs, if I'm not mistaken. No. So those will cook for about three minutes until it's starting to get a little bit tender. Sure. Do you want any salt and pepper in this? Yeah, I think we could add it now or... Yep, it says salt and pepper. Look at that. Look at that to it's taste. almost like you're a chef. I can feel it. <laughs> Look at me. Do, I know. would normally do this, but I'm giving it a little there. I'm back to the no measuring thing. See how quickly, <laughs> how quickly Sometimes I Sometimes you just gotta just feel it. Yeah. I was just I dying. I hid the measuring spoons on you again. <laughs> now, I am, since I got a lot of stuff in there, I am gonna give it a little more oil. That's because I really don't want this to stick on us. And I actually didn't, haven't used this pan in a little while. So we'll just give it another little, little split. Now it's time to get cracking on the eggs. It is. Can you crack an egg with one hand? Ah. I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I'm just genuinely curious. I can't do it. My, my I, godmother's tried to teach me many times. Should I try it? You can. What's the worst that could happen, right? And these, Don't try that at home. These eggs are from Michael's chickens. They are. So they are farm fresh. Very fresh. These were this morning's eggs. Oh my goodness. Yep. We're getting spoiled. Well, what we do is, well, I should say what Rick does is he gets, we use the fresh eggs for things like omelets and things in the day. And then we save the older eggs up to hard boil. Okay. To make pickled eggs and stuff because they yeah. feel much better. Oh. If they're like two weeks old. I think when we get, um, I'm going to scooch in here. Oh, for sure. I think when we get eggs from the store, they're probably already a week or so older, maybe older than that. Right. Um, but they just don't peel very well when they're fresh. So right. we save them for about two weeks because they're super fresh. Yeah. So this is how I just do them at home. I just smash Ooh, yeah. one on the Amazing other one. Quick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So the girls were busy this morning. Yeah. 
Well, we'll have to thank them. Those yolks are nice and bright. Mm -hmm. And yolks are actually a really good nutritious source. So I would recommend keeping that in. Um, in the past, that was recommended by a lot of um, medical professionals that you avoid the yolks or you limit it per week. Um, and that was mainly because they, they thought that it raised your risk of cardiovascular disease. But there have been more recent studies that have shown that's not the case, especially for farm-raised eggs. Um, so we're good there. And they've got tons of nice, heart-healthy, actually, fats. Yeah. So it's actually good for your heart in a lot of cases. And it's actually got some naturally occurring vitamin D, which is hard to come by in a lot of foods. So awesome. eat the yolks, guys. <laughs> They're delicious. Eat the yolks. You heard it and here. And nutritious. Yep. And you heard it from a registered dietitian. So, you know, we're all good. We're all good. Okay. Are you ready for the eggs? Yes. Do you want me to whisk away with the fork? I could do that for you if you want, since I didn't want to mess around with the... <laughs> I do this at home. Oh, too. whisk. A fork's fine, folks. I mean, if you want to get a whisk dirty and you want to clean it, totally go for it. But nothing wrong with a fork. No. It's a lot easier to clean. Yep. And for the asparagus and the bok choy, those two veggies in particular actually have similar nutritional profiles. They are high in vitamin C as well as vitamin E. Ooh. Those are both really good for immune support as well as your skin health. Oh. And that vitamin E is one of those fat-soluble vitamins, so that yolk that we're putting in is going to help us better absorb the vitamin E. Even better. Mm -hmm. all, everybody's doing their job. It's all okay. working together. Here we go. Ready? Ready. Now, we're going to cook this for a few minutes on the stove top before we go to the oven, right? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Yeah, so the recipe yeah. calls for you to keep it on the stove top until the edges are just starting to set and cook a little bit. Okay. Um, and then after that, I think they say that's about two minutes, and then we'll transfer it to the oven. It's at 325, and it says for about 20 to 25 minutes, we'll mm -hmm. put it in the oven, and then we'll take it out and we'll eat. Well, I have good news. It's already cooking. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Won't be long. We can throw it in the oven. We'll drizzle sesame oil. That's another optional piece. Um, and we'll drizzle that on the top once it's cooked. Okay. So yeah, oh. we are doing well. That's you could also, this isn't in the recipe, but I imagine, correct me if I'm wrong, Michael, if you wanted a little bit of heat, you could put like red pepper flakes or something like that. Oh yeah, for sure. That would work That would be super. perfectly well. That would be super yummy. And this doesn't have any dairy in it. So for those that have um, milk allergies or are lactose intolerant, this would be a good recipe for right. those folks. Um, you could also add cheese if you were missing it too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I could see throwing a little cheese on them, some feta. You? No way. I could definitely see putting <laughs> some cheese on this. I think the other thing, too, is that people are under the impression sometimes when they're going to make a quiche or something like that, that you have to put some dairy in it. You don't. Right. If you want to make your eggs a little bit fluffier, you can just put a little water in. It'll, it won't do exactly the same thing, but it'll do it well enough if you're avoiding dairy. So when you say a little bit of water, like how much would you add? Gosh, in there, maybe I would have put like... Less than a quarter cup. Okay. You know, not much. Okay. Just, and that's for nine eggs. So yeah. Yeah, just like a splash if you're yeah. doing. But less it doesn't enough. even need it. We have the water from the vegetables and everything. I think it's fine. Right. I'd say we're ready. Okay. It's looking good to me. Let's Sounds do good. it. We'll pop her in the oven and. All right. We'll be back in a couple minutes. Rockstar. Michael, it's been about 20 minutes. How's it looking? Oh, I think it's ready to go. It looks awfully delicious oh, to me. Oh, my goodness. I think we've done good. It's Again. I know. Should we get into it? I would love to. All right. Now, it did. It looks like it worked well. It's not stuck to the sides. So yeah. cross your fingers. But I think I did a... I think this pan has seen enough action that it's going gonna, it's gonna to give it up pretty easy for us. We did let this cool for a few minutes to let it set a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and also so that Michael doesn't burn his hands when he touches the, the skillet. So just know if you take it right out of the oven, it might not be fully set. Like this. Yes, and then you would want some sort of protective barrier for your hands. Yes. We, we don't want anyone getting burned. Yes. Ooh, <laughs> oh, those look beautiful. They do look beautiful. Okay. You're in charge of the forks. Okay, this will be mine, and this will be... Fabulous. Oh, it looks so it beautiful. It does look really good. I think we... It's like a little spring pie. I think we hit a home run. Ready? I think so. Mmm. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. Oh, you know what, Michael? We forgot to drizzle mm. sesame oil. Mm. I Let's will do it. Run and grab that. Let's do it. I think we should have a little bit on there just I to try so. it. To see how it. Um, so I'm gonna pour it in this cap just because there's no little spout. <laughs> and sesame oil, you can back me up on this, Michael, is a pretty strong flavor. It is, a little goes a long so, way. And I'm, I'm, I'm one that normally overdoes it. So I totally get it. Yeah. That looks great. Okay. Yum. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we get to try it again. Yes. Oh darn, I guess we just have to eat more. Oh darn. Oh darn. Mmm. I like it. Mmm. That definitely adds to it. It does. Look, I have a little asparagus poking oh, up. It's so cute. It's so yummy. This is like the perfect spring. Yeah, I think the sesame oil like adds a little bit of nuttiness to it. Mm -hmm. But it would be totally delicious without it. So if sesame is not your thing or even allergy, you could easily leave that out. Mm. But we like it. Mm -hmm. I'm eating all of mine. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Biblio Bistro. If you'd like to tune in and see our other episodes as well as get the shopping list and the full recipe, you can go to pldl.org slash biblio dash bistro. And for any additional information you're looking for on the recipe, whether that's the price per serving, um, and information about local farmer's market, you can click the show notes, which is on the YouTube page as well, which is on that PLDL website. And if you want to share any pictures of when you're using the recipes, um, you can just use the hashtag BiblioBistro um, on any social media that you use. Until next time, bon, bon appétit! appétit.